Uh, all right, so who am I and why am I talking about scaling international communities to you? Well, my name is Ronnie Hermosa and um, I kind of became a Canva expert uh, over the years. I've worked for two years at Canva as head of their communities at the beginning uh, for my first year. And then I became a community education lead. Uh, and I ended up my career at Canva um, uh, managing their YouTube channel. So I have some deep experience, I would say, about growing Canva's communities on Facebook groups uh, and also creating content, which is my second, I would say, uh, main domain of expertise uh, and specifically educational content that I'm sharing on YouTube. So the story about Canva is actually pretty interesting uh, because I never really applied to work at Canva. I didn't really imagine I would end up living in Australia. I was pretty much traveling around the world for about eight years, uh, running my nonprofit, going from country to country uh, and, and creating audiovisual content for a bunch of nonprofit organizations. Uh, until my partner, now wife, and I uh, got a little bit tired of traveling so much. So we were, I know it's difficult to grasp that concept that being actually tired of traveling, uh, but it can happen when you have to move country every month or every two months. So we decided to settle uh, and we settled in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So it was me, Chiang Mai, in the, <laughs> in the exercise before. And, and from there, we kind of had to reinvent the way we make money. And so we had been traveling and creating videos um, for a long time and, and training organizations about digital marketing along the way in so many countries that we decided, OK, let's uh, use that knowledge that we have, that we were giving away to people during our workshops, our webinars. Let's create online courses and teach about what we know. So we did that. We started uh, created, creating courses for Udemy, which um, turned out to be a good business model, a good um, marketplace for us. And I remember being in a co-working space in Chiang Mai, uh, trying to figure out what my next course should be about. And yeah, I decided to create it about Canva. So I got to work. I created a course about Canva, which became the best-selling course about Canva on Udemy. At the same time, I launched a Facebook community to kind of support my, my course. Uh, and in that community, uh, which was a Facebook group, I started sharing content. So I started really um, developing the educational tutorial kind of format for my community. And it was completely free. I just wanted to answer people's questions uh, and, uh, and create this free piece of content almost every week. So at the same time, I decided, okay, you know what? I have these videos that I'm sharing in my Facebook group. Why not also put them on YouTube? So this is kind of like how everything started. And then my Facebook group, my YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube channel was not very growing. And I'll come back to this uh, in, a, in a second, but the Facebook group was doing pretty strong. Uh, and at the same time, the course was gaining momentum and uh, more and more students. So one day, basically, the, C the COO of Canva, Cliff, uh, sent me a message and he said, hey, Ronnie, we love what you're doing. Uh, uh, we would love for you to come and work with us at Canva. Um, so basically, I talked to him on a Monday. On a Thursday, I was in a plane from Chiang Mai to Sydney. He had invited me to come and check it out and talk to me and try to convince me to, to work for Canva. And so it was cool. I have to admit to be treated like a VIP and be flown over the world to come and check it out. Uh, so yeah, I decided to take on the job and, and, and start to work at Canva as head of communities. So I uh, joined Canva, worked with the community team, uh, which was very small when I, when I started. And my main mission was to, uh, to, to take control, I would say, of the reins of their main Facebook group, which was called the Canva Inner Circle at the time, roughly 6,000 members in that group. Today, the group is called the Canva Design Circle, uh, close to 220,000 members. 
So this is where the presentation starts. So we can flip to the next uh, slide. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about tips, okay? The things that I have currently leveraged uh, while working on growing communities with Canva. And basically growing communities for Canva means growing international communities because Canva uh, exists in every market. They, their product, the platform is in a hundred different languages. So de facto growing their community communities uh, mean meant like growing in in the international market so i have six tips for facebook six tips for youtube and uh yeah it's starting right now so we can flip to the next uh page please mm -hmm. next slide please okay so let's start with facebook all right so my first tip is to show up and to show up often um it's it, it might seem like a no-brainer but uh, when I joined the when I joined Canva and I picked up this Facebook community, basically uh, I, I, the first thing I did is a, a, a like very basic audit. I counted the first ten posts I saw in this community. So I just scroll down the feed, and out of the ten first posts, uh, five were of negative sentiment, two were unrelated, and three only were relevant and positive. So basically, people were using a Facebook group to complain about a feature not working or to basically they use that as a support center because they couldn't reach Canva on the phone. They couldn't get to their support center or help center. So they used whatever they could find on Facebook to try to get some solutions. So my first um, my first reflex was to, OK, I need to show up in this group and, and start um indicating people that we are here we are listening we are understanding their problems we they redirect them to the proper channels for such support problems or issues so that was the first thing but uh, what i realized is that showing up often is the only way to scale a community so next slide please next is to create content that resonates with i18n uh, aka internationalization uh, by the way, next, if you can go to the next slide, I have a pop-up quiz for you guys. Why is it called I18N? Does anybody know? So it stands for international internationalization. But why is it called I18N? Anyone? No? Well, I just learned today. I had to Google it because there are 18 letters between the I and the N in internationalization uh, because it's so hard to pronounce. So teams in the tech companies, and you know, time is money for tech company. Uh, so uh, they always want to go fast. And so uh, I18N is the word for internationalization. All right. Uh, so how do you create content that resonates with an international audience or market? Well, first, your community manager needs to be someone who is aware of um, uh, someone who is aware of the, the different cultures of the world, okay? So the biggest mistake you could do is to have someone who maybe has never traveled or someone who um, is, is kind of like communicating in a, in a way that they would communicate with their mates in Australia or something like that. Like you need to be kind of slowing down, realizing maybe not, a, not everyone is uh, speaking English as their native language. Not everyone has the latest um, way of like the cool lingo that you might be using on a Sunday brunch with your, with your friends. It, it's not going to be only that. So having this uh, affinity with international cultures and like, for example, hiring a community manager from another country or who has traveled a lot uh, could really help. Also, the type of visuals you use with your in your content, like very be very um, uh, proactive about using diversity in the images, in the stock images, in the uh, B-rolls that you use in your videos. In the examples for, for me, like I create content about Canva. So if I create uh, a Canva social media post, uh, make sure I'm representing an international audience with the photos that I choose, for example, for my post. So that would be my second tip. So if we move on to the next slide, uh, the third tip 
is to identify and connect with your top contributors in the Facebook group. This is super important. Uh, I did this since the beginning. So my own Facebook community that I launched with my course. Um, I think before we reached 200 members in the group, I really spent some time to connect one-on-one -on -one via Skype at the time. It was before Zoom. <laughs> uh, I connected with five or six most active people in the group. Uh, and a lot of these people are still my friends today. And they are still following me. And they're like my top fans and uh, subscribers everywhere. Uh, kind of like a 1,000 true fans, which is a, con a famous concept in the community world. So uh, connecting one-on-one -on -one with your like pioneer members, most active members, will do a couple of different things. First, you will learn a lot about what they really want, uh, what their struggle is, what, um, what pains are they going through, and, and, and what they think about your content. So that's the first thing you will learn about your audience. The second thing is that you will connect on a personal level with someone and, and you will kind of create fidelity. You will create a, a fan for life if you don't grow up in the, in the later years. Uh, but um, yeah, so you will, you will have this insight into your audience and you will create people that will follow you and they will double down on the communicating engagement in the group because now they've had like a direct contact with you. They are uh, aware that you care about them and they, they will for sure continue to engage and probably double down on this engagement in the group. So identify your top contributors and really give them that extra attention. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Uh, yeah, develop an ambassador program. So this is probably the best way to scale your in like your communities internationally, especially if you don't have uh, the resources to start like hiring community managers left and right in every single country. So um, why why creating ambassadors and how to create ambassadors? Uh, the why first is because there are probably people out there who are advocates of your service or product. Uh, for Canva, it was very easy because Canva is such a lovable platform. It's helping so many people and it's free. And the free version of Canva is already amazing. So it wasn't very hard to find a bunch of people who were Canva enthusiasts, Canva lovers. And so um, I remember being invited prior to working for Canva to become an official Canva ambassador. And I was a Canva ambassador since the beginning of their ambassador program. Uh, and today this program has evolved, but um, creating ambassadors and, and giving them a few extra perks, uh, like Canva was giving them access to the pro version of Canva, access to new features before they, they were launched uh, to 100% of the users. Uh, they received uh, pr um, priority support. Uh, they had a private community for them to connect and, and collab and all of this stuff. So developing an ambassador program could really help you um, scale and, and spread the word, uh, spread the word, sorry, in, in different regions of the world where you might not be well established yet. All right, so we've developed our ambassador program. Next, you need to empower your ambassador. This is super important. It's not a one-way thing. They're not working for you. It's, it's a collaboration. So you really need to be aware of that. Um, it hasn't been a straight line at Canva with their ambassador program. There's been some mistakes made and some tweaking and some frustrated people. And now it seems to be a little bit better, but uh, it's not easy. So you really have to be careful to be with your ear on the ground at all times, to be empathetic about what these people want and not make the, the classic mistake of, oh, we are such a big multi-billion company. Like we will give you visibility for your work. We will pay you with visibility. Like we will feature you on our page, on our YouTube channel. This is not enough. Like for me, when I was community manager or head of communities, I always insisted that we pay our ambassadors in um, certain 
um, circumstances, not paying them for being ambassadors, but because they were getting paid via the, the affiliate program, but getting paid when we asked them to create a piece of content for our YouTube channel, for example. Uh, and, and that's, a, that's an, a way to show your VIPs that you value their time, that you value their work. And for such a big company as Canva, paying a content creator a little bit of money for creating a YouTube video is not a big deal. But for them, it means a lot. It means you respect their work, you respect their time. Okay, let's move on to the last point. Uh, be transparent, no matter what. Um, again, this is something that was not always the case, and that's where most problems came from. Uh, so I, I really recommend that you be transparent with your community of ambassadors. Um, maybe not like be fully transparent with the entire community. If you have like uh, several hundred thousand people in your community, you have to kind of be um, on brand and uh, obviously respect a few different um, things that are confidential and everything. But with your select uh, group of ambassadors, you, you can be a little bit, and if, and if you need to make them sign a, a, an NDA. Uh, so I know that Canva ambassadors had to sign an NDA and that they could not talk about certain things, uh, certain features, but if you include them and you're transparent with them, they will stick around and they will understand when things are not so good or not so um, you know, clear, or they are still in beta or whatever. But the biggest mistake we've made is to not be transparent. So yeah, be transparent. All right, that uh, wraps up uh, Facebook communities. Let's talk about YouTube, which is where I'm having the most fun at the moment. So I also have six tips. So let's see what's number one. Yeah, be ready to suck for two years. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube, guys. So if you uh, put on the next slide, you will see what I mean. Uh, yeah, this is our lifetime uh, views on YouTube. So 8.6 million views. So that's not too bad. Um, 168,000 subscribers so far. But look at this long, straight, and sad line at the beginning. Uh, so that's from July 2018 to pretty much March 2020, nothing was happening there. So, and we, and I was posting one or two videos per week. So just be ready for that. That's just how YouTube works. Um, there's a QR code here if you want to check out my, our channel. It's not just mine, it's me and my wife, Diana. Uh, we talk about Canva. So be, uh, feel free to subscribe here, but it's, it's really painful when when you post and nothing happens and uh my best advice is to not give up because things will start to happen at some point uh it it just so happens that it was it corresponded with covid uh weirdly uh so yeah march february march 2020 is when everybody started to be stuck at home and and uh might be a coincidence, but this is when our channel started to take off. Um, also, we became more serious about YouTube around that time. So yeah, um, be ready to suck for two years. All right, uh, next point is not about you, it's about them. So this obviously refers to your content. Um, when you create content for YouTube, it's not about what you want to talk about really, or you can, but you won't have views. Um, if you want to vlog about what you're eating or what you're, where you're going on holiday and, and why you like Bali so much, it's fine, but uh, it's not gonna get you many views. Uh, it's, it's, it's really important to understand if you want to scale on YouTube that the content you create needs to address a need of your audience. So go back to the first uh, points I gave you, um, connect with your audience, understand what they want, understand what their challenges are, and try to create content about that because it's, it's really simple. If they find value in your content, they will stick around, they will subscribe, they will come back next week. Um, so yeah, it's about them. Next, please. Okay, be 
Like, yeah, this is the cliche, the golden rules, be authentic, be consistent. Uh, I know it is, um, it is something you probably already know, but it's so true. Like being authentic is, is important. There are maybe not hundreds, but dozens of channels of people who create Canva tutorials. But we are the biggest one. We are even bigger than Canva's channel. Why? Because we have developed a style that is us. Like nobody edits their videos like we do, and nobody talks to the, the audience and has fun with the audience like we do. And at the same time, we keep bringing the value. So we found our voice. We found our sweet spot, our authentic content type, I would say. Uh, so that's the first part, being authentic. Don't try to be the next Peter McKinnon or whatever. Be you um, and be consistent. Uh, meaning if, if, if you decide to use YouTube as your main distribution platform, once a week is, I would say, the bare minimum. Uh, at the moment, we are around three videos a week, so two long and one short. Um, we should probably continue scaling this, um, this uh, cadence if we want to, to reach 1 million subscribers, which is kind of like our long-term goal uh, in terms of subscribers. But yeah, when we started to, when we doubled, when we went from one video a week to two video, videos a week, we saw a really nice uh, boost from YouTube and support in terms of um, impression. So impression is kind of the visibility YouTube gives your content to put your content in front of a new audience. Uh, so being consistent is really important because your audience um, at some point will expect your content. They will expect your weekly tutorial. So yeah, don't disappoint them. Okay, next please. Uh, yeah, reply to every comment until you can't. Uh, this is super important. I spend one hour every single day answering comments. And most of the time I'm, I'm just saying thank you or thanks for watching or yeah, or heart emoji. Why am I doing this with like almost 200K subscribers? Well, because it is the best way to show your followers that you care about them. If we go to the next slide, you'll see kind of like a typical, this is taken from my, our latest video that went out this morning. Um, and you see this blue line view uh, reply from Design with Canva. So I reply to every single comment for a couple of different reasons. First, I like it. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see the impact I'm making on the world by reading these comments. Uh, this is not a selection of comments. This is a screenshot of four of our latest comments. So. It is really gratifying. I, can, I, 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 I find my motivation and my inspiration in these comments and in the fact that I'm helping the community. This is really the why, our why we are doing this. Um, the second thing is that it will show people that if they write you a comment, they will get an answer. So more people will write you comments and therefore YouTube will see more engagement on your content and therefore uh, your channel is probably going to grow faster. So yes, until you can't, try to reply to every single comment. Next, uh, to go live. Uh, try going live on YouTube. This is something I haven't done yet, but I'm really looking forward to do once two things happen in my life. <laughs> the first one is I'm, I'm actually working on updating my course. So the course that I created back when I was in Thailand and I put on Udemy and became the best-selling course about Canva that kind of got me into Canva. This course has been made in 2018, so it's old and outdated. Uh, when I was working at Canva, I had no time to tackle such a massive project to update this course. It's like nine hours long, so 60 different videos. Updating it would mean redoing it. And so now, ever since I left Canva, I, I, I'm, I'm working on this update. I'm about 70% done. So once I'm done updating this course, and once I moved out of Australia, because I'm moving to Barcelona in a couple of months, uh, then I will start going live on YouTube. My, I'm, I'm really looking forward to start uh, connecting with my audience live for um, an hour or so per week. So 
I know this works and I really am looking forward to, to start doing it. So yeah, let's see the last uh, tip. Yeah, use and abuse the community tab. I don't know if you know what the community tab is on YouTube. I have an example on the next page, um, but yeah, community tab is like a Facebook feed in YouTube. So use it. So we use it usually to uh, show photos of ourselves, like behind the scenes, ask questions, promote our latest videos, and people engage. You see 560 something reactions to this, almost 60 comments. Um, so yeah, it is, it is right there. It is available for channels with, I believe, a thousand subscribers. So once you get there, I really encourage you to use it maybe once a day uh, and to start building community via this, via your lives and via the comments. And that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you for listening. And uh, I'm super happy to answer any questions you, you might have.